It's Top Dice Epic Role Playing Battles. Hi, and welcome to Top Dice. I'm Aid, and this is Chris. Please remember to click subscribe, and it just spreads the channel. Now, today we've got something a bit special. It's an epic role playing battle. Me versus Chris. And this is going to be right to the bitter end. Yeah, Three. You did, oh, yeah. I'm, you don't stand a chance. I'm, yeah, I've, um, I've been working out for 30 seconds for this one. Well, no one asked for it, but you're getting it. Yeah, this is it. And the great thing is you decide who wins, not us. So yeah. you need so, to start voting on here as soon as you see it. Whose is the best? Right. And what is it we're going? We're going for the top three role-playing games where you don't play a human. So non-humans, this is the way it goes. We're going to go top three. Here we go. Chris, who goes first? Have you got a coin? Wait. Okay, heads. I have a coin. Yeah, I found it. Yeah, yeah. I know, yeah. Right, you ready? Heads or tails? Heads. Heads. It is. You. Uh, you pick. Oh yes, I get to go first. Well, this is right. it. I'm in the hood. This is this is the one. Okay, starting oh, number three. It. You don't stand a chance, fella. I'm hitting the ground running. Root. There you oh. go. You're going to have to go real top to stop that one. Really. This is a fantastic little game. D six. Nice and simple. Look at the art to begin with. Absolutely spot on. It's based on the board game, I know. So, but there oh, it's The great so thing with this, you get to play a majority of You're defending the woodland, and that's the big thing. You're exploring and defending your own little bit of a woodland, and you get a variety of classes that you can actually be, and characters. You've got to sort of look after that woodland, protect no, no, it from all listening. invaders and make sure that you sort of remain at the lead of it. Um, you get things like rangers, rogues, uh, you get to advance, you've got uh, vagrants, look at that for a vagrant, you can't get more vagrancy than that, I challenge you to find a more vagrancy character than that one. Uh, uh, fox, yeah. mouse, rabbits, birds, opossums, which that one is, you've got loads. What about a bit of a thief? There we go, raccoon. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah. And the great thing with it with the character sheets, if you can actually see, you get your play sheets and you tick boxes when you get your character sheet. So you can actually decide what your nature is, what your drive is, what your connections are, weapon skills, and roguish feats. Ooh. That particular one. So number three for me. Root. Over to you, sir. Well, uh, my, my third is Puppet Land. Ooh. Not animals, not animals. No. Puppet. Puppet. That's the first edition I might have, which looks like a split two-sided book. I think 1999, way back in the distant past. Then second edition came along. Lovely book, lovely book. Sorry, my camera's all over the place. Lovely. The core elements of the whole game remain the same. You are a puppet. Um, I think if I remember rightly, games only last for an hour. Um, and basically, um, you create a character using a picture uh, on a character sheet. Um, there are no dice. Um, it's you know what you know one of those games. The way it works is basically uh, if you can do something, you do it. If you can't do something. Um, you can still sort of do it, but you've got to like mark off a piece of your character uh, to the picture because it's all like a, a your character picture looks like a jigsaw. Um, and the more you sort of cross out, the more to sort, of, uh, sort of like you know damage you take, and then eventually your character dies. That's the way that works. Um, it's more of a sort of um, story time, sort of hour long uh, storytelling thing based based on the table of a uh, puppeteer. Um, it's literally about as unhuman as you can probably get. Yeah, definitely. Okay, well, let me tell you, brother. Back at you, no. that's so embarrassing, but we're going to still go with it. Oh, I'm literally cringing here, but never mind. Humblewood, look at okay. that. Oh, oh yeah. That? Now, well, what is that? 
This is actually um, a campaign setting for fifth edition rules. Um, it's again, it bit similar to Roots, but it takes it to the next level. The art in it is absolutely amazing. Um, that takes to the next level as well. But basically, again, it's all about protecting your space, and I just love that that little paladin owl there. That that just sets the uh, the, the edge for it. And of course, yeah. you've got uh, you've got the crow behind, who is uh, quite a sorceress looking thing. Um, and right, this basically uh, contains a shed load of characters. Uh, you've got a full campaign in there, which is uh, which is Humblewood itself. You've got reference charts. You've got uh, battle and location maps as well. By the way, in here, I'm I'm just sticking the screen because it's so lovely. Uh, you get the cardboard standees in the box set, and uh, you get the plastic uh, bases for them as well. It literally is a full campaign in a box and the cards too are absolutely amazing you've got you get the uh, i've got some jazzy spell cards that sort of uh, move around as well um it's all based around uh, a, a great tree and um, you are basically um heroes of the forest a bit like root but really does take it into fifth edition world yeah, and so. uh, it's got so many more options and it's just glorious so there you go number two Humblewood, get in. That's some some nice uh, some nice stuff there. Okay, uh, now we have uh, my number two is uh, Mouse Guard. Oh yes, look at that double wrap round cover, amazing. Thick enough, thick enough to stop your players doing anything horrible. You look smart, behave yourselves. That's all, all useful. And literally every part of it, wall to wall, it's all used. Everything. The, the amazing map. Um, created from the amazing mind and art of uh, David Peterson. Amazing. Uh, if you haven't got the graphic novels, go buy them. Um, amazing source material. It, system wise, it uses a variation of Burning Wheel. Really, really good. Um, artwork is incredible. Um, you can play mice. I know, shocking. Um, but it's the fact that there are no humans in the world, no domesticated cats as a result, and it's all to do with sort of exploring and defending a medieval style sort of um mouse built world um all the other creatures the same size like sort of wolves bears um let's prey snakes um and then you've got um sort of all all uh, badgers things like that um i think you can have like mounts as well like birds and things like that but the art uh, just Amazing. Um, there's a box set. You were talking about a box set before. Now, I can't quite emphasize how heavy that is. That's the box set. We're talking about the box set. This contains, I don't know, to press open. We have, we have dice. We have cards. A bloody fantastic rule book. We have new rules and additions and stuff like that, which I believe you can download as well if you've got the original. Um, and then what else have we got? We've got character sheets. We've got GM stuff. Um, and what's this? What's this? What is this? We have... A GM screen. Now, please. I'll rest my case. Amateur. Complete amateur uh, stuff. What can I say? Saying that, saying that. Oh, let's see number one, apparently. This is funny. Mighty Tiny. I knew it. I knew one you'd... dice game. Now, oh. the author of this is absolutely amazing. Um, I can't recommend him enough. He's a guy called Adrian Jones. 
Mm. Um, and this particular one uses the one dice rules, and it's basically uh, using the IP of Ben Dunn. It was all licensed. Um, now, The World of Mighty Tiny is a series of graphic novels, and it's set in a post-apocalyptic world where humans have been wiped out. And mice, rodents, and other small creatures have survived it. And there's still remnants of mankind knocking around. For example, a hand grenade would be considered to be almost on the level of an atomic bomb in Mighty Tiny. Um, and these relics are about, uh, you've got good guys who are actually trying to protect the empire uh, and protect the kingdoms. And uh, you've got others that are trying to subvert what's going on. You've got two distinct races. You've got the rats and the mice um, in this particular one. So, for example, uh, you've got uh, Mustupia, which is the uh, the mouse nation, and uh, Ratveria, which is the um, the rats part of the world. Now, what's not widely known is that it's actually set in Texas, is this, after the mega destruction. And it's not too far away from an army base. Now, the entire world of Mighty Tiny probably fits into about two or three square miles thereabouts of our world. That's the entire world that they actually know. But they've developed into a sentient race or sentient races. And the level of technology is about 1920s, 1930s. So they've got cars, they've got trains, steam trains. Um, they've developed electricity. And um, it's, it, it's a really interesting take on it. So there we go. Use the one die system. So it's a simple D6. The stats are very simple as well. You've got your three core stats. You've got some skills. Also, it depends on the, uh, the, the class. By class, I mean whether you're upper class, lower class, uh, middle class. That's all built in there. And a um, bit of a disclaimer, I did write this, so I'm a bit biased towards it. But okay. Absolute shock. Yeah, I, mean... I I do enjoy it. It's it's absolutely great, and um, I don't go on about this one often enough. It's uh, it's a great setting. Ben Dunn, you'll probably know you Ben do, Dunn as an artist that, from. Uh, well, he's done uh, he's done Warrior Nun. Uh, he's done Ninja High School, and also he worked on quite a lot of the Robotech stuff as well back in the day. So that's where Ben Dunn is from. Look him up. So there we go. Mighty Tiny. Tales of the uh, Old Empire. That's my number one. Okay, then. Uh, right, number one for me. I'm taking it back to Star. Dark Crystal. I could literally just leave it there and say, say nothing else. Because what more do you want in a role-playing game where there's no humans, right? Okay. Just another world, another time in an age of resistance. That's literally what it says on the back. I mean, River Horse, who produced this. I, I, I cannot praise these guys enough. Um, again, every single part of the book is used um, to the point where even right, the cover of the hardback itself is very nice. Um, and then this kind of falls out as a map things like that, it's all very useful, things like that, um, it's got ribbons, every book needs ribbons, uh, but as to what you can play, what you can be, oh sorry, there's a lovely little um, rules sort of card, things like that, that folds in, they thought of everything on this one, um, it's completely contained, story the system everything is in this i believe they're not you know basically they don't need to do anything else um you can play what you start play as uh one of the girlfriend and then when you die um you can then become uh this, i think there's part well basically all the other um races that were in um the TV series. Um, just, it's, 
it looks beautiful and it just lets your imagination run riot. Um, the campaign in it, I won't spoil it, is utterly, utterly sort of amazing. Um, you have, like, for example, the way they've created it, each scene, each sort of event is a two page spread. So you open it, and it makes makes the GM's life a lot simple. It's just like, well, this is all we need to know. You know it's right here, it's done. You know, you know, there's none of this kind of like, oh, I'm gonna switch through this like that. Uh, the system itself is quite simple. Uh, uses, um, I think it's from D4 up to D12 dice, uh, which I everyone rightly looked his stats and things like that. Um, it just keeps it, it keeps it simple. It keeps it quick. And it's just really enjoyable. So yeah, for me, number one, Dark Crystal. Well, <clears throat> there we have it. Let's have a quick rundown for mine of, uh, of, of three to one. Um, so we started off number three with the Root Core book. Again, wildlife fun. Then we went on to Humblewood, a bit like Root Book, quite a bit darker in there. And we finished in the worlds of Mighty Tiny. That's my top three, and that's my number one. Right, I've wolfed my one down. Um, Puppet Land. Very upside down. Puppet Land. Just puppets. Well, what more do you need to know? Not even bloody animals, not even, you know, creatures. I mean, really, that should be, that should be one. That should win. Then we went to Mouse Guard. God, that's heavy. You know, you're mice, you can be knight, it's medieval. What's this not like? Um, and then we went, like I said, back to Thra. Just, that does not need any other explanation. So, there we have it. Two sets of top threes. Which one do you prefer? Well, mine, thank you, yes. Choose mine. Yes. I mean, Perfect. Uh, I didn't write one to win, so he's cheating, wherever he is. I wrote it. What can I say? I wrote it, so come on, that's cheating. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, you get to choose. Um, please uh, stick a comment which one or which set of three you preferred, or even just which game you preferred there. Um, choice is yours, basically. This is a test. We'll see how it goes. If it's liked, we'll come back and we'll do more top threes. Yeah. Epic role-playing game table battles. What's more of that? Perfect. Right. Yes. Remember to click subscribe and we'll see you soon. Goodly bye.